Hello YouTube, this is Bowtide Media, and today I have a review of Steve Aoki's 6 Aoki? Rave Royale? Odd titles aside, Steve Aoki is such an interesting personality in the music industry right now. The man literally acts as if he is an entire label. The Steve Aoki name literally just puts out music with anyone and everyone. So many collaborators, so many random projects here and there, it just feels like his name is more of a brand than it actually is an artist. This project, Six Oki, is a hard style project that calls on 10 collaborators to be on six different tracks. I went back and actually found a 5 Oki and 4 Oki, but not a 3, 2, 1. So I'm not sure if those are just older projects or whatever, but this is his sixth, I guess, installment of this six Oki, and this is Rave Royale. It's a little confusing, but like I said earlier, 10 different collaborative artists on this, both production and vocal features. It is crazy. Every track has at least one artist on it, one feature, and he just brings so many different artists to the table. First up is Tarantino with Timmy Trumpet and Stark X, and this is actually my favorite cut of the EP. The basis and background sound of this song, Tarantino, is from classic movie director Quentin Tarantino and his infamous cowboy western sounds. It's been a soundtrack song that has been used a few times in his films and a lot in the film industry. And all of that is with a Steve Aoki hard style twist. And I've always been a fan of Timmy Trumpet, so his presence is deeply noted and pretty solid for this track. The first drop is this minimalistic, almost side trance style hard style drop. I know it sounds really weird to say. And the second one being a lot more melodic hard style with an almost kind of trap switch at the end. But while the drops aren't bad, it's definitely the non-drop sections that are the most fun when Timmy Trumpet comes in and just lays into this soundtrack. The song would absolutely slap at a club or festival. Close to You with Brennan Hart and Pollyanna is number two, and it's a pretty basic hard style track. It's got a long intro with a very distinct female vocalist that goes into a bass line driven hard style drop and it's your pretty standard song. If you really enjoy Hardstyle and or Brennan Hart, you're gonna really like this song. B.I.B. with Kid is up third, and as someone that listens to a lot of Kid, this does not sound like him at all. Kid is known for these long, almost euphoric cinematic sounds and these giant builds that go into this just phenomenal drops, but this is not that at all. I don't really hear Kid anywhere here on this song. This track really has no appeal to me and is my least favorite on the EP. Considering it's two primarily non hardstyle producers in both Steve Aoki and Kid, I just, yeah, this is a big mess for me. Incoming with Gammer is the fourth song on this track list and sadly the shortest coming in at just two minutes and 27 seconds. This track easily has the most melodic sounds and elements to it and has a really nice refrain part in between the two drops. I just wish this track had an extended refrain in between drops and or a third drop. I think this one definitely deserved it. Like It Like That is a weird dichotomy of a track where the non-drop and drop sections feel totally counter to each other. The Like It Like That is like this kind of uplifting bubbly personality where the drop section is just kind of heavy and dark and gritty. I must say the more I listen to this track though and kind of pull apart the silliness of the vocals, the more I tend to actually enjoy it. I'm a sucker for electronic instrumentation that mimics a vocal performance just prior, and this song does that, and I just wish the first drop had a little bit more flair to it like the second one did. Mind Control wraps up the project and is a dark, gritty take on Hardstyle. It's a quick and dirty club banger that really only works in a club or festival setting. There really isn't a ton happening on this track, and this one feels the most phoned in of anything here. Steve adds these kind of bubbly catchphrases at the end of each song, and I don't really understand why they're there. I guess they're for some cohesiveness to the whole project, but to me they just sound useless. Part of me wants to feel impressed for Steve Aoki's ability to collaborate with so many different artists and have similar-ish sounding music, but then another part of me just wants to hear what Steve Aoki would put out. Just Steve Aoki. What does Steve Aoki sound like? by himself. And I definitely wouldn't say Hardstyle is his strong suit. He's definitely a lot more comfortable in the big room and commercial house settings. But that's not to say there aren't some good moments on this EP. Ultimately, it feels like Steve Aoki has become a vessel for other producers. The moniker of Steve Aoki is sort of a label now where others come to collaborate and or join in on the fun. And I wouldn't say this project is necessarily bad. It definitely feels like a compilation more than a thought out and nicely put together EP. 
but it's also not the best thing. While Steve relies primarily on the production features and their experience in hardstyle, this EP as a whole just feels kind of confused and lost. But with that, I'm going to give Steve Aoki's Six Oki Rave Royale a 5. Thank you guys so much for watching. I've been Bowtied Media. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, and I will see you guys in another video.